Okay, it's book club. We're a book club again. This time we book club the book Educated by Tara Westover. I loved it. Kirsten loved it. Kathy loved it. She's an amazing writer, and her story is not to be believed. It's unbelievable. So I hope you enjoy this episode, and if you want to read the book, there's a link to the to purchase the book at Amazon uh, on wifeotp.com. You can go there and find the book there and just click the link, or you can get it at your local library. Um, so recommend it. We have a good talk about it. I hope you enjoy this episode of the book club. Uh, thanks for coming back every week, and um, see you next week. So we read an awesome book. Or I thought this book was awesome. Amazing. It was great. Okay, it was Educated by Tara Westover. Is that yes. right? I freaking loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved did it. You? Yeah, well, I did. I read it twice. <laughs> you read it twice. Because I read it a long time ago, and I was like, oh, I remember, but I don't remember a lot. So mm-hmm. I'm glad I reread it. I just read it in November, um, and I gave it to Sandy, and she read it, and I practically book clubbed it with her over the phone driving one day. She loved it so much. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I think she's a reader, but she's never really talked to me about a book. Um, I think it's a really great book. It, it's beautifully written, and the story is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a big story, but it's really just that it's so beautifully written. She really writes <laughs> the heck out of it yeah she did a good job it was easy to read it was i read it on the flight to cleveland and for one we were in cleveland shooting bird special so i was in a hotel all day so i read it on the flight and finished it the next day in the hotel and and it's not a super short book it's not you know it's not a 500 pager but it's is it wasn't like a super short book i just couldn't put it down i couldn't put it down and you know we keep People keep commenting. We have a theme in our book clubs. Uh, th- it seems that all of ours are are either self help or about someone who's persevered over some huge <laughs> monumental thing. And this does not disappoint. I was going to say, well, we really <laughs> but, changed it up here. <laughs> That's, but the thing is that we do self help or memoir, and memoirs are almost always about persevering over unbelievable odds yeah i guess a memoir um, wouldn't yes, be yeah true. so yeah. anyway i rode the bus to school and <laughs> yeah and got things have been bus. great forever yeah right yeah. my life has been rosy mm-hmm. well i guess yeah so so maybe we should read a fiction i don't know <laughs> and a is for apple <laughs> b is for ball i'm on w is for wasted now are you i cannot yeah. believe you're on w you must be a That's voracious great. reader i am I wish I had time. I still yeah, haven't read our too. book on the anxiety for teens. I, But caveat, someone hacked my Amazon account. And when I was on the tour bus, I was going to, I was like, perfect. It's on my Kindle. I was reading it on my Kindle. Couldn't log into my Kindle. Found out that someone hacked my Amazon and started buying PlayStation gift cards <gasps> on my Amazon account. And for whatever reason, I wasn't getting emails about their purchases oh. so i didn't have a flag until i tried to log into my kindle and now they have disabled my amazon account for how many weeks now two or three it's weeks been a while and i can't they keep saying you'll get an email within 48 hours how we can reinstate your account i have called them three times and have after the 48 hours and have never gotten my account restated. So I can't access that book. Also couldn't buy that book because I have no Amazon account. Oh, <laughs> so I no. finally went to Barnes & Noble and bought the book. But I'm like the monumental effort it has taken me to wow. read this book. Um, and I really was going to read it while I was on the tour bus. Can you imagine not having Amazon for three weeks? I'm not sure I, I could function. I haven't had Amazon for I three know. weeks. It's been, it's been terrible. It has it to be. It was certainly bad like, timing for you. It was terrible. <laughs> well, I finally got Bert's login. And, but I was like, well, what happens to all of that I've purchased, all my Kindle? Mm-hmm. Like now my Kindle is locked. How do I, I mean, if I have to start a new Amazon account over, that's fine. I can set that up with a, a new email address, fine. But I don't want to lose all that I've purchased on my Kindle. That doesn't seem Leanne, right. Leanne, this is yeah. so funny because I feel like I had this exact conversation with my in-laws over the break and um, Richard was getting so frustrated and was like, oh, what do you mean your Kindle account is lost? And it, he was so aggravated about this, but now I'm seeing it from their side and going, wow, maybe this really did happen. We we just sort of defer to thinking that they did something wrong because they don't understand technology the way that we yeah, do. Right. But um, they got locked out of their Kindle account and shit. My mother-in-law was having the same thing. Well, what, do I lose all of my books that I've already purchased? This is really frustrating. And we were just like, ugh. 
You just need to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it took me a while to figure it out because I would log into my Kindle. I know my password. It's my Amazon password. And it would say, we need to authenticate. So we're going to send you an email with this authentication code. And I would authenticate. And it would say, nope, you've got the wrong, uh, you've got the wrong login. I did it seven times before I thought, huh, <laughs> let me ro- try to log it into my Amazon account. Same thing happened with Amazon. And I went, okay, something's going on here. Something's wrong. But it took me a good solid like 30. It, I was first thing in the morning. Everybody was asleep on the bus. I got it really early. I was so excited. I was going to sit down and read this book so we could book club it, right? I was like, I'm going to have at least an hour, hour and a half to just read, which never happens. And I spent 40 minutes just trying to get into my Kindle and then got them on the phone. And they were like, oh, yeah, your entire Amazon account has been flagged for fraudulent activity. They won't tell me what activity they they flagged. All she said was, have you been purchasing PlayStation gift cards? And I went, no. I said, well, I want to see what purchases they've been making. How much have they charged to my account? Am I liable for those for those purchases, don't you need to know what I legitimately purchased and what they didn't? And she said, can't give you any of that information. It'll come when you get that 48 hour later email, which I've never gotten after three phone calls to Amazon. So not my favorite vendor Ugh. at the moment. Because mm. it takes up so much of my time to then look and then call them and then sit on hold and then explain it again. And then have them go, I'm going to have to put you on hold. I'm going to have to get someone else to ask. And then you're on hold. Such a pain in the ass. And then wait two more days. And then wait and two then, more days yeah, to see if they send the annoying. email. And then they don't. And then I call. And then I wait. It's really a pain in the ass. Sorry about the gardener. <laughs> it's being very helpful. Somebody sent us. I'm like, what, Leanne? <laughs> Let me just say. No. Someone randomly, we got a package. And if you're listening... I hope you don't take offense to this, but I do have kids. They sent us a three-pack of doormats, really nice quality doormats. They say welcome, except they don't say welcome. They say whale, like the oh, animal that yes. lives in the sea, and C-U-M. Uh-huh. Whale, come. And I was like, I'm not putting this at my doormat. I have children. I That's not, I mean, I know Bert's funny, ha, 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 but that's not how we roll at our house. So thank you, whoever sent those. But I have now given them to my gardener. <laughs> because I, I, that's what I was talking to him about. I was like, you see, it's a dirty joke. It's a play on words. I want you to know before you put this at your own doormat <laughs> that you're saying, well, come, not welcome. And I don't know if he really understood. <laughs> so hopefully nobody shows up in his house and goes, uh, what's that about? <laughs> you got a thing for whales? <laughs> <laughs> wow and crazy and also crazy that it showed up at our house so maybe it's from amazon <laughs> maybe it's from amazon maybe they yes that's what they've right? been ordering that's what they've been possibly ordering. <laughs> i like your way of thinking that yes. could be it okay they've been ordering dirty doormats <laughs> <laughs> and playstation gift cards <laughs> anyway so let's get back to talking about yeah. this book. Okay, we will read the anxiety, but we will. We do will. That I've another... got the hard book. I bought it. Like, it's excellent. Spoiler Friday. Alert. I can't yeah. wait. I was really <laughs> into it. I'm seriously was so excited to sit down on that tour bus and read, and I felt very angry because I I could have really knocked a lot of that book out in an hour and a half. So anyway, but this book is great. I yes. read it a couple years ago whenever it first came out, yeah. and I um, tried to get it out of the library in the time that we since we talked about doing it and um, couldn't get it out of the library, couldn't get it on the um, audio file from the library. And um, I'd run out of time. And so last night I was just printing up like book club questions about it, just sort of like Googling it, like just to refresh my memory because I read a lot of books. So I was like, I loved it. And I remember the general story, but the specifics were really lost on me and the specifics are good. I mean, it's, it's an excellent, excellent book that I had forgotten a lot as well. I'm glad I reread it because there was definitely stuff in there. I was like, Oh yeah, crap. I forgot about that. Like such a bizarre life. Yeah. So let's give a general gist, right? This young lady, Tara grew up in a family that was, uh, they're Mormon and they were very religious. Not just Mormon, fundamentalist yes. Mormon. Yes, very, Hardcore. very religious. That's a better way of putting that. Super Mormon is what I would say. <laughs> so fundamentalist. Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> yes. 
Um, and so she did not go to school. She had no formal education, right? They mm-hmm. called it homeschooled, but in fact, there was no schooling done. No, no, all. Lo- no read and write all. and arithmetic. Right, nothing. It, their quote schooling beliefs was learn how to work really hard. I think that was the gist of it. And church. And go to church and be a good person Mm, from the way the church teaches. I don't know if being a good person. (laughs) Well, they weren't. They I think they thought they were, but that doesn't mean they actually are. I think they her parents thought they were being good people. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. So at a certain point, she she had how many siblings? I've forgotten now. Was she one of she had five or six? There yeah, were she's six pe- kids, right? I, I think there were six think kids. So. That sounds right. And she was one of them. And the she six. was the youngest. Yes. Yes. Yes, she was the youngest. So she had an older brother who started, they had a set of encyclopedias. So he started reading the encyclopedia. And I think they had some basic science books or something like that. So he started trying to educate himself and decided he wanted to go to college. So he kind of blazed a path that Tara eventually ended up doing herself right that's a basic gist of the idea so she ended up self-educating and getting herself into Brigham Young and then moving on from there in a pretty amazing impressive fantastic Mm -hmm. fashion and eventually and getting her PhD and not just eventually when you say eventually getting her PhD it sounds like oh long I mean she got her PhD at like 27 or something so she really went when she did get educated she it was whole hog yes she did um, just crazy fascinating, right? And then there were several siblings who just remained in the family and remained the same. There were uh, a couple that got out but didn't go to the level that she went to. And it was just fascinating to to hear her take and the asterisks throughout the book saying, this is how these two siblings remember it with me and the other two, three siblings remember it this way, which was very fascinating because isn't that the way it works, right? That's mm-hmm. what a memoir is, is my memory of the experience. Two other people remember it the same. These other people remember it completely different. Really, that must, I believe if I wrote a memoir, I would have that up and down on every side from my mom. My mom would say none of that happened when I remember it happening that that's a very um, disconcerting way to feel I would imagine for her to have half her family remember something the way she does and the other half go you're out of your mind that didn't happen but she well, asked I mean she ended that, up being depressed because of that yeah for a, you know a long time yeah like not being able to function because she couldn't reconcile the two worlds like am I crazy am I not crazy mm-hmm like it literally does such a number on your psyche. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even know where to start. Should we start with your book club questions and see? Uh, I don't know that the book club questions are that great. Oh, Um, okay. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'll look through them. They're not that great. Um, Well, similar to the book I read, Hillbilly Eulogy, which is, I think, being made into a movie, she... She and he from that book both transitioned out of one world into another where you where you function in this set of values and beliefs. And now you're thrust into a world that either has opposite or so different or ones you've never seen before. And it is paralyzing. Um, I did that, too. When I moved from Bowden to New York City, uh, that was there's a lot of things you don't even know exist that all of a sudden you're like, wait, there's what? Huh? And so her process from that, she explained in the book, going from her, how her beliefs kind of shifted, I thought was really interesting. Yeah, too. I mean, simple ones like when she was at Brigham Young and she's in the dorm and a girl shows up um, in the dorm, in the dorm, but in her PJ pants, like flannel PJ pants and a tank top. Yeah. And she literally cannot wrap her mind around the fact that this girl is wearing a tank top and she literally locks herself in her room Mm -hmm. so that she doesn't deal with this outrageousness of a girl wearing a tank top and the girl is also mormon right yeah right like that was the hardest part yes like how can this person be mormon yeah dressed like this that's not how mormons are supposed to be that that was really a mind scramble to go like wow if something that simple is making her like retreat from mm-hmm. people into her room. Imagine all of the bigger things um, 
because there's a lot of tank tops in the world. There's a lot of tank tops and, <laughs> and there's a lot of bigger and... things and more mm-hmm. shocking things in the the world. She was so isolated. Yeah, she was so isolated. And yeah, that was really amazing how it really did just shut her down. Um, and you think that that I, I and that I'm sure happens in every fundamentalist sect of every religion. So in the Jewish religion, in the Southern Baptist religion, you know, there's a lot of born again uh, that that have such extreme beliefs that anything outside of that is actually dangerous, like threatening somehow. Um, well, and it was because when she was in like she was like a teen or a tween and she was in that theater company uh-huh. in town and um, she was her her brother saw her wearing makeup, the bad brother. Yeah. And then he beat her to a pulp and called her a whore and mm-hmm. um, said she was a slut just for wearing makeup. So if that's what's happening at home, that you're getting beaten to a pulp for wearing makeup and wasn't necessarily extreme makeup either, then imagine like how that shapes her worldview to then see half of the women in the world wearing makeup and yeah. like... Yeah, everyone wears makeup in the real world, just about. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean the learning curve, and mm-hmm. I wonder, I wonder today how she is today. You know, I find you have to when you leave a world and you go into another world and you stay in that new world. Going back into the old world is hard uh, because you have to, at a certain point except that the people that still live in the old world are not wrong because they believe differently than you do or because you've uh, matured or um, uh, progressed out of their belief system and their cultural functioning and you don't function that way anymore to go back into that and to not function that way but to accept it it's hard to realize that you're not condoning it you're not um participating in it you're not saying it's okay but that you can't change that culture so your choice is stay out of it entirely or go back in it and be uncomfortable for a bit and realize they haven't had the opportunity to learn or progress or mature like you have and to love them just the same is really hard to do sometimes because you go yeah i don't I don't think like that about people, but I can't possibly change every single person in my family's thinking about people. And to be able to choose what you address and what you don't address, I think is really hard. Well, and I think she no longer has yeah, a relationship with her parents at right. all. I think she doesn't have that option. Um, I think it was like, you don't come back in. But I think she does have a relationship with three of her siblings, three yes. of her brothers, maybe. So. Um, and her parents' siblings. One, her mom's siblings, maybe? Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, she kind of went back into their world and was yes. like, okay, these people are kind of normal people and has a family and her brother that got out. I think right. she's really close to. Right. But her nuclear family that she grew up with, I think there's, it seems like there's no contact. Like she's not allowed back in even if she wanted to i would love to know more about her brother who the one who wanted to go to college the first one the the encyclopedia brother yeah um because yeah i mean he really as you said blazed a trail for her but it's just so amazing like that one person can make such a difference Mm -hmm. in someone's lives Mm -hmm. and and we've all had those people everyone has somebody who does that but um just what it took for him to be that first person right um to blaze that trail um he must be a really fascinating guy he's really strong Mm -hmm. person clearly yeah Yeah. and has a strong sense of self in a certain way i think when you grow up with that kind of um it's not oppression but it's it's like a you have to live in this little box and if you get outside that box you are bad evil terrible out of the family which is so threatening to get outside of that box to be brave enough to say no actually i can ha- i can take care of myself and i mean more than this family unit means to me is a really hard choice to make um and to be the first one to do that because she could go okay well i'll have him he's already out but he didn't have anybody that yeah. is a good point. That would be really fascinating to know more about him. And he's married and seems happy. And 
That's so interesting. She didn't really use him, though, until much later no, on. No, she didn't. She just watched him. Yes. She just observed. Yeah, I mean, clearly it had an impact on her. Yeah. But when she was making that transition, like, her reliance on him was very minimal, which yeah, was. was interesting. She was extremely independent. Yeah. And, I mean, just to think about the independence of, like, not having school. I- I'm imagining my kids, or or me, for that matter. I, I love to learn, but... I was a pretty traditional student and, you know, was really tied to grades and tied to, you know, people pleaser, pleasing teachers, pleasing parents. But I'm just imagining like, okay, if I just told my kids, no, we don't have to do school anymore. We're just going (laughs) to, you know, I've got a job. I need you guys to just help me at my job. We're not going to do school anymore. Would they have the interest and the, the dedication and to to buckle down and go, I'm going to read the encyclopedia until I can read no more. I'm going to like the way she had to teach herself algebra. Yeah. yeah. For crying out loud. And then like just to take the test to the um, like to pass the GED. And then she didn't she didn't pass for algebra in the first place. And then she had to go back over it. And she's like practicing algebra for fun. Like, right. you know, <laughs> right. Just to get ahead, like how much you have to want it. And and she's practicing in secret. In secret, like yeah. Hiding it from her father so that he doesn't know this is actually happening. Yeah. Like, no, exactly. Right. So, the with the full support yeah. of your parents, like if I said to my kids, <laughs> guess what? I'm willing to help you <laughs> learn algebra every day and uh-huh. we're going to practice. They would just look at me like I grew horns. Like, right. And that's their idea of hell. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. it's just. She's just a fascinating person. Like she, it takes a really special kind of determination and grit and yeah, grit drive. Yeah. Um. But at the same time, my kids have a really comfortable life. Her life was in no way comfortable. No. Um. It was terrible. It was dangerous. Yes. Um. Yeah. So the drive that that created to to get her out of there. Right. Um. Was her big. brother Sean was evil. He was. Yeah. I think he was mentally ill. Like or something. Well, well especially she, after the head injury. Yeah. Like that very often. And when she's in like, college and is taking like a introduction to psychology course or something and learns about bipolar and she's like, <gasps> like a light bulb goes off and she's like, oh, my God, my dad's bipolar. Oh, my God. We're, you know, we've been learning all of this stuff from somebody who's mentally ill. Like yeah, it, from, yeah. it was his delusions right. that have taught me all my life and that it just created such a mind shift for her to go, oh my God, maybe everything I learned was wrong. It was based on one of his delusions. And then um, this uh, is a quotation that I thought was interesting. Or, um, not a quotation, but her father says, after she goes on and gets her P- PhD, he says, homeschooling can't have been that bad considering she did so well in her education right. and got her PhD. So this is one of the book club questions that says, do you think she succeeded academically because of him or in spite of him? And did he impart any lessons that helped her succeed academically? And my reaction to that is he created such a horrible environment that it just drove her to work her ass off to get out of there. I don't think that's entirely true. I'll tell you why. Um, I did not live like this woman at all. Not really. But I, my dad's a mechanic and I, we, uh, I did a lot of things that were really dangerous, like split wood with a hydraulic wood splitter, like play in a junkyard. That was a playground for me was a junkyard with broken glass and broken metal and shit. I didn't have to work. I wasn't forced to work like that. Right. Cause she's working it. She was working in the junkyard. But, Um. but I think that 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 danger not only motivated her to get out, but I think it taught her how to work really hard. And so working hard at algebra was a natural thing for her because she had to work hard anyway. That's true. So yeah. like when I went home to my dad's for the weekend, I had a lot of playtime, but the log cabin we lived in had no heat. If we didn't split wood, we didn't have heat. So we had to split wood all day and then play, right? So I didn't work all day, but I had to work because everybody had to split wood. We all had to do it together. So... Splitting wood is really fucking hard. Yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's hard. So, but you had to do it. So I, I had so many things like that I had to do as a kid when I went to my dad's 
that hard work is not hard like it is for people who didn't grow up. My kids would never be able to do that today because we never worked hard like that was no reason for you go in the backyard and split wood for two hours and then you can play with your barbies you know it's just not gonna work in la but i i know i value that in my life because like the past two or three months that have been really intense i know how to do that i can do that i can work 24 hours a day for months at a time i'll be exhausted and i won't be super happy about it but i can do it and i know some people who cannot do that who just no, are you're like, right. Yeah. So it's like she, he gave it. her the grit. Yes. I guess yeah. I just don't want to give him anything because <laughs> I he understand. Was so they they were so bad to her. They, they were, were so bad to her. Terrible, terrible parents, and it was a dangerous, uh, unsafe environment. And um, so I just don't want to give him any credit for I her. Getting see, that's PhD. interesting. I'm less forgiving about the mom than I am about the dad. Not that he deserves a whole lot of credit, but but at least he's mom, mentally ill. Yeah. Like there's an excuse there a little bit. And I don't really understand his philosophy. I do understand where he's coming from. The mom, I feel, was way more manipulative and almost vindictive. Agreed. Like she's the one who bothers me more so than dad. She definitely did not protect her daughter. Not at all. She did not give her daughter and, But any then protection. like pretended to protect her in that whole email exchange or whatever and then literally threw her under the bus. Yeah. Like she was dog shit. Yeah. Like that really. Well, Dad never did that. Yeah. Dad was consistent throughout. You know, like you know what you're getting with him. Well. May not be nice, but you know what you're getting. Absolutely. And, you know, I related to this story because of my mom's mental illness mm -hmm. on so many levels and because I grew up playing in junkyards and in sawdust piles and in the woods and nothing as extreme as her, but I understood it, right? Probably more than kids today would. But when you live with someone who's mentally ill, you have two choices. You leave them or you comply. And sometimes when you try to step out of that relationship and say to someone out of the side of your mouth, Hey, I understand this is crazy. He, I agree with you, but you can't really agree with the non-crazy person because it threatens the relationship with the crazy person. You have to choose. That woman had to, ch she chose her husband over and over again. I don't agree with that choice. Right. She's also a different generation than we are. And I think well, not that just different generation, but really more than anything, the fundamentalism of the because in their household, women were absolutely subservient, including mm -hmm. the girls, but not the household she grew up in. That's the household yeah. she chose. That's what's that's what makes it worse in a way. Yeah. Is that the mom grew up in a relatively normal Mormon household, right? Not fundamentalist. And then she yeah. fell in love with this person who actually was crazy and had, I think she, she went into compliance with the fundamentalism to maintain the relationship because you have to when someone's crazy. You don't have a choice. I had the same reaction when I read that book, Trapped in the Mirror, where I went, now I understand everything about my mom. So when she was describing, when we were learning about bipolar, I know exactly how she felt. It answered every, that book answered every question I ever had about myself because I went, oh, oh, okay. None of this was me. This was a mental problem. This was her stuff. Now I wasn't a perfect person and I didn't behave perfectly because I was a child, whatever. But uh, now I understand what's going on, right? It's such a a freeing moment. It was a freeing moment for me where I went, okay, this whole big host of things I can put in this box here and understand it now. And now I can kind of figure out how to move forward. But the mom never got to that place. Or if she figured it out, she made the decision to just enable or comply with this bipolar problem and stay in this relationship because it was whatever, safe. She got some fulfillment out of it. She had to get something positive out of it, the mom, or she wouldn't Ugh. have stayed. I just can't imagine as divorce, a mom. Fear of divorce is stronger whatever. than, yeah, I don't know what would drive her and to she, stay. But she picked her husband over her kids. I mean, yeah, absolutely. 100%. She did. And absolutely. I can't, I cannot relate to that. I, yeah. I love Richard. I don't mean that I pick my kids over him. No, no. But I absolutely, uh, yeah. Wouldn't turn your back on your children for your husband. No. That's what she did. 
She yeah. turned her back on some of her children. She never turned her back on the fucking crazy one, on Sean. Yeah. Which I didn't understand. Because he's so similar to dad. Yeah, I think so. Like, they're both the same, so. He was an evil And I think because yeah. he needed more from them, because he was going to be getting in trouble with the law or getting in an accident or hurt, you know, I think that he needed more from them than the functional children. He definitely was recognizable. Possibly. Yeah. It was very recognizable. I mean, uh, not not more. I mean, the ones who were getting harmed also needed <laughs> things from her, but they were things that could be gotten from someone else or from somewhere right. else. It's like that, you know, if you have a disabled child, you more of your attention goes there. And that's kind of what was happening with him. For sure. Grr. I know. It was awful. Yeah. And then all the freaking injuries, these people. The oh injuries. God. And the driving. The, the dad car accidents driving. And nobody the car. wearing a seatbelt. And no. then they, um, you know, have this almost fatal accident. And then later there's another they equally do the same horrible thing. thing, thing and nobody's thing, yeah. wearing a seatbelt again. Same thing. The fact that three of them had massive head trauma. Yeah. Which changes your personality and whatever. Like, how is that? How does that happen in a family? Like, not in the same accident. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, separate over years. It was crazy. And the burn. Every, the, every, just about everybody got burned. Yeah. At some point. Another, yes, <laughs> exactly. Everybody's burning. They were dropping like Close flies, but everybody survived. Everybody survived. <laughs> That's that same mentality. You know, my dad dropped a camper on his head and super glued his head back together. It's the same shit. <laughs> and then people just go, I got this. I got yeah. this. I, it amazes me. The motorcycle yeah, accident. Yeah, but this was he not had. that. This was not. I got this. This is God has got this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, which I don't know is a little different in my head. It is a At least lot. Your dad different. is like, okay, I can take care of it. This is like, well, God will figure it out. He's either going to die or not. Yes, that's true. That's I mean, they did do a lot of balms <laughs> and a lot of put some lavender on it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, so cooking up in a <laughs> pot. Yeah, a bunch of shit like that. But yeah. I just think, wow, and and that's another thing. You know, she got, didn't she get cut really bad? Didn't she get cut in the leg? She, yeah, like a chunk of her leg was missing. Yeah. From a piece of metal when she was scrap ironing. On the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they were scrap ironers, scrap metal. They collected yeah. scrap metal. So she got sliced, right? And then mama treated her and she got better. But, you know, there's something about living with pain over time that grows a certain metal in a person. I believe mm -hmm. absolutely. If you live with pain over time, then you you come out the other side of that steely strong. I think so. I um I did take a note about this. One of the things that was fascinating is somebody offers her ibuprofen in college because okay. she's had this earache <laughs> that won't go away, and like how big, like how her mind was blown by wow. It really did take the pain away because my mom's my mom's potions never took the pain away. Right. But can you imagine having ibuprofen for the first time in college? No. And then um, her one her roommate drags her to the doctor to like a clinic at some point because she has this horrible sore throat that hasn't gone away. And she was so frightened of it because her parents are absolutely anti doctor. She didn't even have a birth certificate for ever nine, nine years, years, ten years, yeah. something like that. Because she was born at home, her parents never filed anything. They were off the grid, like, and she was so they they made her so terrified of doctors. And then she went to the clinic, and the way that shifted her brain, where she walked out of there going, "Wait a minute, this is what I've been afraid of my whole life." Right. Like to be eighteen or nineteen years old and to go, "What? Yeah, that was fine." Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they were a bunch of crazy hillbillies, <laughs> those people. One of the things that struck me the most was really at the end where she was still, after all of this, after a PhD, after all of this stuff, still struggling with being fully independent and away from her family. Yeah. Like out of all the crazy, out of everything she had learned, out of how much she had changed and grown and still wanting to be desperately accepted mm -hmm. by her parents. Like, it was so heartbreaking yeah. to know, like, they're fucking crazy, but all I want is for them to acknowledge me as me yeah. and not getting it. It really, I don't know, that really bothered me a lot. Like, what a tough decision to have to face, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, I and know. And it's yeah. lifelong. Yes. I know right? that exact decision. Yeah. And let me tell you something. It sucks. 
yeah. is terrible. Uh, there is a hole that never gets filled. Not ever. And managing that hole is really um, interesting because the hole grows and shrinks throughout mm -hmm. your life. You know, when I had the incident with my grandmother, I've talked about a few times that happened a couple months ago, that hole got really big. And then I was like, you know what? I'm shutting the hole down. I'm, I'm at, at 50. I'm done with this hole. <laughs> I really don't need to be in that place. But there's still part of me, you know, that thinks, I hold on to part of the past. Uh, there's still a part that wants to be seen as who you are. Not even necessarily to be validated completely. Just to be, well, I guess validated is acknowledged, but just acknowledge that I see who you are. And that will never happen in my mom's family. Not ever. It's not possible. And to know that that is not a possibility. And the po the impossibility for her is called bipolar, mm -hmm. right? It's his bipolar and the effects of that with the family, the nuclear family, and that is causing this disconnect. It's the same with me. My mom's, uh, my believed mental problems that my mom has is the reason I can't ever get that. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, there's nothing that you can do that says, I feel that my mother understands who I am. Nothing. And maybe other people feel that way too who don't have crazy relationship with their mom. Maybe maybe you don't have such have to have such an extreme case like mine or like hers to not that my life was like hers. I don't want anybody to compare that, but there are nuggets of her life that I really related to from my life. And that's one of them is that into the book, exactly what you're talking about. When she was talking about that, I went, oh, girl, I know exactly what that feels like. Yeah. I think that for and those of us who don't have as dramatic um, a history with our moms or whatever, like I've got a great relationship with my mom, but there was so much in it that was relatable. It really is such a yeah. beautiful book. Yeah. Um, but even just the sense that I think we all have the feeling that whatever family we grew up in, there's a certain amount of like, oh, well, this is normal. Like, this is how a family does things. And then the older you get and the more families that you meet and the different ways that you see. At first, it's like, oh, they're crazy because they do things that way because you just made another family. And then you meet like hundreds and thousands of families. And you're like, oh, wow, everybody does things a different way. And, you know, actually that the way that we did that thing is actually crazy, like, <laughs> even though I'm from a normal family, right. a normal, happy family, even in a normal, happy family, there are some crazy ways that we did yeah, things. Totally. And yeah. Um, yeah. And some crazy dynamics within yeah. the family structure. Mm -hmm. Every family has some crazy relationship. Every family's too. weird in their own way. Yes, it's true. It's true. Um, I um, copied down a quotation here um, from when she went to Cambridge. Um, she got a fellowship in Cambridge and um she has this wonderful prof who just really sees her and sees her talent. And um, anyway, she says about Cambridge, this is a magical place. Everything shines here. And um, I don't know if this is her teacher or her therapist, actually. But he says, you must stop yourself from thinking like that. You are not fool's gold shining only under a particular light. Whomever you become, whatever you make yourself into, that is who you always were. It was always in you, not in Cambridge, in you. You are gold. And returning to BYU or even to that mountain uh, that you came from will not change who you are. It may change how others see you. It may even change how you see yourself. Even gold appears dull in some lighting. But that is the illusion. And it always was. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was a professor that said that. That guy yeah. was awesome. He was amazing. Yeah, yes, I think oh, it was too. Yeah. yeah, that was really probably very important for her to hear. I just got chill yeah. Because yeah. it is important to know who you are is the same. Yeah. You know. Anyway. It's so important to have that person too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just somebody who really believes in you and... It was so rewarding after reading all that she went through just to even get to college, let alone all how tumultuous it was just adjusting to life in the regular world. Um, and 
for her to, it was just so rewarding for her to finally have that person who was really championing her and really saw her for who she was and who was just behind her all the way. And he said, I will get you into whatever graduate program you want to get into. You are that good. And right. tells her it's the best paper that he's probably ever read right. at Cambridge. Which I believe. Well, I mean, and the fact that yeah, she accepted it because other people had been yeah. supportive too and she sort of shut it down. Right. Like, didn't she change churches at one point because the yeah. pastor, priest, I don't know what to call him, was too supportive almost. Right. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. You just get the people you need when you need them. Yeah, I guess. I think like, that's right. God that worked. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think the people you need when you need them is right yeah. about everybody's life is if you're open to it. And she may not have been ready when yeah. that pastor was there. He yeah, may have been it was doing so early right. in her journey yeah. away from the mountain. Right. Yeah. It takes some yeah. time. So I know it's very scary when you move into a new world because your instinct is to protect yourself because you don't understand what's happening. I mean, you know, you don't understand what's safe and what's not. You have to figure that out as you go along. And especially people, when you go into a, a group of people you're not familiar with, you have to figure out what is safe and what's not. Well, and she had 16 years of this indoctrination yeah. of that people are bad. Everyone outside of our family is bad. Everyone who's not Mormon is bad. Everyone who wears a tank top is bad, yeah. you know? Yeah. So to all of a sudden in day one be confronted with that, juxtapose 16 years of yeah. hearing that is bad, you know, so like it's hard to reconcile that. I have kind of a funny story about that voice, like the parent's voice in our heads um, from when Camille was born. So we had written, we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl, and we wrote lists of girl names, boy names, and we had our top two girl names and top two boy names. And when the doctor said, it's a girl, um, Richard said, okay, so what do you think, Camille or Alexandra? Those are our two names. And I immediately said, Camille. And right as soon as I said Camille, I was like, I never even liked the name Alexandra, <laughs> but I'm the one who brought it up. Right. And um, not, th I, not that I don't like it. I think it's a beautiful name. It's just that it wasn't for us. It wasn't. Yeah. And Richard said, oh, I agree. And all of a sudden it coalesced and I realized that I remembered hearing my mom <laughs> telling me when I was a kid, oh, I just love the name Alexandra. I wish I'd named one of you kids Alexandra or Alexander. They're both, it's like the perfect name. It's perfect for a boy, perfect for a girl. Like Alexandra and Alexander. You could be Alex. It's so modern. It's, she went on and on about this. She really loved the name Alexandra. And I realized as I had just given birth to my first <laughs> child that I was like, oh my God, our parents' voices are so deep in our yeah. heads that I put that on my list and it's not on my list. It was right? never. It shouldn't have been on my list. That's really funny. Um, but and, I mean, it's such that's such a like sweet and innocuous story. But I mean, really, our, I'm finding myself at 47 years old, sometimes going, wait a minute, do I really think that, or did my parents think that? And I'm just, I'm like, how am I just waking up at 47 to that stuff? But it's just, it's, it's really insidious. And I yeah. wonder what things I'm telling my kids now that. 20 or 30 or 40 years from now, they're going to be like, what? No, that's what mom thought. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe that. Isn't that true? Right. Yeah. That's really crazy. That's a great story. <laughs> that's a very clear illustration of how your parents get in your brain and stay there. Yeah. And you don't even know it. Don't even know it. Like, that's yeah. not something that you think about. I didn't think about it one right? second. And then yeah. it was like, Camille. I immediately blurted out Camille and went, I never even liked Alexandra. <laughs> so Camille really went, me first. <laughs> yeah. Me first. Yeah. Me, me, me. Which is good. Right? Healthy. That's crazy. I like that story. <laughs> That's a good, clear, clear description of that. I know that I happens for all of us, I think, where you think thoughts and you go, wait a minute. Where'd that come from? Right. That's not me. Um, that happens to me all the time, too. It's hard to, it's hard to get. It's amazing how the first 20 years of your life really is your base for the for the next what, 60 or 80. It's just, it just sticks in there. You spend it's your so whole much pressure as a parent because I'm like, <laughs> what damage right. have I done uh, that I don't even know that I've done? Yeah. And 
I'm not I'm not Just pushing enough years, good stuff in you. there. <laughs> yeah, to, or maybe not wait 20 years, maybe wait till tonight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's possible. So it's going to come out. <laughs> They'll let you know. Yeah, for sure. It's very true. Yeah, we're all causing damage without even meaning to. It, it happens. Yeah. It's the way, you know, we're not perfect people. I did a terrible thing the other day um in parenting. You did? I did. Um I have apologized for it, um but <sighs> basically um Camille failed a Spanish test uh-huh. and um, the teacher emailed the parents whose kids didn't do well on the test and said, you know, make sure that they're doing Duolingo. And so I told Camille, you know, you need to do Duolingo. And she said, yeah, yeah, I, I do it all the time. And I said, OK, well, you know, do it now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I want you to keep doing it. And then a couple of days later, I realized, wait a minute, when we set up her account, it was on my account so I can see or or like she's one of my friends on Duolingo, whatever. It's not really social media. But um, and so I checked on Duolingo and it said Camille had zero XP this week. And I was like, OK, she lied to me. And then I went to month and it showed zero uh-huh. XP. And I was livid. Yeah. I was furious because I was like, you know what? That's why she failed the test because she has not been studying. But furthermore, she has been lying to me. Yeah. It's not about the it's not about the test. I don't I don't care about yeah. the test. Or I the care grade, yeah. about the yeah, I the care about the, the lying. Line, right? Yeah. And I was irate. So she came home from school and I said, We need to talk. And I told her. I, I, I saw that you've done no Duolingo. And she said, that, that's not true. I, I've been doing it. And I said, Camille, the app doesn't lie. <laughs> right. I I see here that you have done zero days, not just this week, but this month. And then I got really riled up and we were and I was yelling at her and I said, this is unacceptable and the lies and I, I can't stand being lied to. And I was I was really, really angry. <sighs> oh, <laughs> So we had a weekend and um, she, I said, are you doing your Duolingo? Okay. She did it in front of me. I saw her doing it. I heard her doing it. And yesterday, um, the kids had gone to school. I went on Duolingo to check how much she'd done because I knew she'd done it, but I didn't know how much. And it showed zero. And I was like, wait a minute. I sat next to her. I saw and heard it. Like, I know she did it. Um, And I hit refresh. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. And it turns out that not only did she have like 287 XP for the week, but she also had a whole bunch for the month. And I was just, oh, my God. I I mean, I I could cry talking about this. (laughs) I felt like such a terrible parent that I believe technology over my kid. You know, it's hard not to. I mean, really? Yeah. It's well, hard Because the to. evidence, it felt like the evidence was... Hard. The app is telling me this, and her grade is telling right. me this. Yeah. And, um, oh. The evidence was hard. That was, that was hard fact. I feel fact. like such an asshole. So I <laughs> sent her a text at school, and I said, could you please call me at lunch? And she said, is everything okay? Am I in trouble? I said, you're not in trouble at all. I just need to talk to you. Um. And she called me and I said, I am so sorry. I have made a big mistake. That whole fight that we had, that was my fault. Um, I should have believed you. I should have trusted you over technology. <laughs> um, so I did apologize to her, but I just, I feel sick about it. I And that that's definitely going to be on her list of things of but like I don't how think my it is. parents failed me. Uh, you know why I don't think it is? Because that's not your standard behavior with her. And you really did operate under the pretense of believing that that she was lying based on hard facts, what you thought were hard facts, and you fixed it. So you've shown her how to make a mistake and how to fix it. You've shown her how to admit to doing something wrong and apologizing, which is really hard for a lot of people because mm-hmm. a lot of parents would have been like, oops, not bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> never mind on that right. one. She'll never know. She'll never know. Sweep that right under the rug. But that's right. not what you did. You made right. the decision to to own up to your mistake and apologize for it. 
So I think that is really important lesson. I think she's going to laugh at you about it for a long time. I do too. <laughs> I think she's going to go. I think she's going to torture you with it because remember that was, time mom went oh psycho God. on me and it wasn't even my fault. She was so sweet. When she came home from yeah. school, I gave her a big hug and I was like, I am so, so sorry. And she was like, it's okay, mom. It's okay. And I, I always say to the two of them, I'm like, you know what? You guys are really lucky that you have a sister because um, you We'll always have each other to compare notes on like how crazy your parents are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is going in that category. Yeah, That's all. Like this is the only person in the world who's going to understand at a base level <laughs> what you're dealing how, with. How, yeah. Yes. <laughs> how crazy been dealing with. dad and I are. Uh, well, give them this book, Educated, and they'll go, Mom and Dad were awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> the best parents ever. No head injuries. I didn't really die over no. Duolingo. No severe there were no burns. shears chopping off a limb. <laughs> they made us wear our seatbelt, yeah. thank God. Uh, yeah. I right. hated nobody that, Nobody was but called a mind. slut for wearing makeup. Yeah. Uh, like. Nobody broke anybody's arm in a fight. <laughs> uh, uh, the domestic abuse yeah. that happened in this from siblings i don't understand how the parents allowed that it's to happen horrible. that was intense especially even not to be anti hashtag me too but the physical biology of a male versus a female as far as strength upper body strength versus lower bodies there's no there's no way that this young girl could have fought her brother effectively in any capacity, uh, who ever. was an adult? He was. He was uh, an right. adult. He was yeah. an adult when he hurt her. Yes. And then, like when they went to the family, she finally she comes home from college, and I think it was when she came home from college. I don't know. And they have a big family talk, and she says, "Mom and Dad, this is unacceptable. The way yeah. he's been hurting yeah. us. Oh yeah, because she realizes that he's still hurting her sister, who's at home, and it didn't right. occur to her. It occurred to her that it she was, was her, the one was getting his hurt. Wife. Wasn't it his it wife? It was his wife. Yeah. He was hurting his wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was right. the other okay. sister who was older than her that had gotten hurt. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. That's what started the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. And, um, but then her parents, they, her, her dad just um, performs some sort of ceremony, religious ceremony, basically saying, oh, it's done and it's. No, then they blame her. Yeah. They blame her, essentially. They blame Tara. And they blame the sister. Yeah. For, and for then this. they call yeah. in the brother who comes in with a knife, cuts her hand in front of the parents. Yeah. And the parents are like, yeah, he's not abusive. No. You're like, uh, he just fucking uh, assaulted me in front of you. Yeah. Murdered his dog. I mean, he's a whole way up the hill. God. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Super rageaholic like, maniac guy. No wonder you feel crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like you can totally understand. No You're validation. You're assaulted yeah. in front of your parents and they're like, yeah, that didn't happen. Oh my God. I'm yeah. bleeding so, that's right so now. That's so destabilizing. Like, Honestly, it's right. amazing that she... She is this well functioning. Yeah. Yeah. On so many levels. It is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy because that... When something happens, that's a fact and it is denied as if you're a liar. It makes you doubt the truth all the time. So then you... I tell stories now from my past that I don't believe are true. When other people will say, yeah, that's how I remember it. That's exactly right. I don't believe my own memory because my own experience was denied, right? I never got cut like that. But I had things like that happen with my mom and where she would say that never, that did, I don't even know what you're talking about as if it never occurred. <laughs> And I'd be like, well, maybe I don't remember it right. Well, maybe I'm wrong because as a healthy, rational person, right, you want to it believe other people in your life, especially your mom who says, of course, no, that didn't. You're not remembering that right. Ugh. Then you go, oh, maybe I'm not remembering that right. And at a certain point, you just you don't really know which end is up. You don't really know what to think. She went through that, too. Yeah, she, she talks did. about that. Yeah. Like really not trusting yourself, not trusting who you are, no. your own brain, your no. own memory. No, I didn't trust my own brain for a long, long yeah. time because of that exact same, nothing that extreme again, but stuff that would happen that she You don't say need to say that matter. every time. We know that it wasn't yeah. that extreme, yeah, but yeah. it still counts. It still matters. It's the it, same thing. It's, yeah. It's the same experience. It's, it's a yeah. mental beat down right mm -hmm. where they just beat down the way your brain thinks and because they want you to think the way they think 
But that's not possible for anybody. I couldn't possibly think like either of you because we're not the same brain. So, yeah, it's a really weird thing to... Yeah, it's gaslighting. It is yeah. gaslighting, but like in such a all-encompassing way, where it's every single piece. Like your brother's not beating you, or you definitely deserve that. That's the other thing, too. The knowing that something happened that you didn't deserve and being told you did is very upsetting also to go, but I don't know that I did deserve that. But if my mom is saying I deserved it, then maybe I did. Right. So maybe wearing lip gloss, I am a slut. I yeah. am a whore. I am trash. Right. I am a piece of junk. No one could love me. Right. You know, this is a terrible way to be brought up. And the unraveling of it is is very, uh, very hard work. It takes a lot of thought monitoring, like monitoring mm -hmm. everything that comes in your head for a long time and then assessing it and then determining whether it's true or false and then acting accordingly. It's exhausting. That was my whole 20s was every single thought I'd go, but is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Now I can move forward. Um, yeah, she she's a really strong lady. Mm -hmm. My freaking brother. Oof. I just wanted to find him and kill him. He's such a I bad guy. It's amazing. Yeah. There's just zero consequences. Zero. Zero. Yeah. Like, n no police. Like, the, the all of the acts. Like, just nothing. No consequences for this terrible human. Yeah. It's remarkable that that is even allowed to exist. Yeah. And it does everywhere. Not yeah. just in her life. It exists everywhere there's so many Which people's lives you know i think there's a part of us as people who don't want people to be as bad as they are like you have this we are probably the only i think i heard this somewhere we're the only species that has hope like that one emotion mm -hmm. and hope can be so very dangerous it can be life-changing but it can be really dangerous if you if you know He'll be good this time. This time he won't put my head through the wall. And he puts your head through the fucking wall again. And 15 years later, your head's been through the wall 80 times. And you still hope he won't do that again. I think so many people can relate to that. To just hoping. Because we want, I don't, I never wanted my mom to be someone I couldn't have a relationship with. I wanted to have a relationship. And I kept Hitching my trailer up to that truck going, this time I'm going to tow it along. This time it's going to stick. And it just never does. And at a certain point, you have to lose hope. And that is that is like um, grieving. It's like a death. When you let hope die, it's like a death. Because you really don't want people to be that bad. I don't think she wanted Sean to be that bad. And when he showed up to, and did nice things for her, right. that kept the hope flame burning, right? So but that it was when also he, destabilizing that, because it may, it, I mean, that just throws you off when somebody is abusive and then does something nice. It does make you question. Yes. That is, a that is an abusive person. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that is what makes it so hard yeah. to lose hope. Yes, it may. Yes, because it does make you question how bad was it really? Ah, oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, but I he's mean, a good guy. Yeah, look how right. nice he is now. And he said sorry. Such an asshole. He yeah. just lost control. <sighs> he didn't really mean to break my fucking arm <sighs> in the parking lot in front of people, you know? Yeah. He, and then you excuse it, and then yeah. you let hope rises, and you do it again, and then hope falls, and then it comes back, and it's just this terrible cycle. I think that's hard to break. Um, I found another quotation. You did? It's pretty good. And this is about her relationship with her mom. Um, and I don't remember what the book is that she read. Um, but she, or, or maybe this is a prof reading her book. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, more words appeared. Words I hadn't known I needed to hear. But once I saw them, I realized I'd been searching my whole life for them. You were my child. I should have protected you. I lived a lifetime in the the moment I read those lines, a life that was not the one I had actually lived. I became a different person who remembered a different childhood. I didn't understand the magic of those words then, and I don't understand it now. I know only this, that when my mother told me she had not been the mother to me that she wished she'd been, she became that mother for the first time. Mm. Yeah. You know why? 
because she acknowledged everything that she'd been through in that one statement. And, you know, after her mother wrote that, she went back oh, to her that bad was her behavior. mom's. That was her mom's email. That was the email. And that was the destabilizing yeah. email yes. because yes. it was like, oh, wow, she... She gets it. She gets right. it. This has changed my life. And then she threw her under the bus yeah. right after That's that. That's what I was talking I was thinking, about. Yeah. When you step out from that relationship with the crazy mm-hmm. person that you're in and you say, hey, I see you, but I'm in compliance with you. And then they go right back in with the... Well, it was like this email is completely outside of the relationship anyway. That's right. But the reality is she's still very much in it. Yeah. Mom is still with dad, still living on that mountain, still in that house Mm -hmm. and is never going to leave. And And there was that one tiny piece where she was outside. They have like a a multi-million dollar business now with the salves and the potions. They did. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious to know what company that is. (laughs) I think it says it in the book. I think it says it somewhere in the book. I don't think so because no? the parents' so. names are not their actual names. Oh, got it. They, um, all of the bad characters' <laughs> names have been changed. Right. They still have the same last name, so it's not, you know. Brain surgery um, to figure out who they yeah. are. Yeah. Um, but the good siblings <laughs> all have their correct names. So did any of you see any of the negative media that came out with this book after it was published? No. No. What is there negative to say about this? It was- <laughs> that her family denies it all and oh, says that it's a smear campaign and this is made up and how, how most of it's not true. It's fiction. It's not a memoir. Um, that must have been really hard for her. Yeah. To have written this. To to be able to write this, I would imagine, would have taken so much self-work work and reflection and pain to look back at all these things that are so painful and write it on paper that in and of itself is such a feat. And then to go out to publish it and have it, it out there public to everybody, everybody, just getting it on paper is one thing. I, writing right. a memoir is such a brave thing. Publishing a memoir. I just I'm in awe of everybody who does it because it's so personal. I mean, yeah. so personal and painful. Yeah. Butterfly Expressions is hmm. the name of the company. Really? Never heard of it. Yeah. Not impressed. Butterfly expressions. We'll have to look it up. <laughs> right. Oh. Bless, they sell blessed water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't her daddy become a, a minister? Oh, great. He, that's going to be really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the fundamentalists in, on his mountain, I'm sure they will love it. It'll be right up their alley. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something I understand, but... They had a lot of people supporting them. They did have a lot of people supporting, a lot of people buying their salves, mm-hmm. and a lot of people hitched up yeah, to because, their truck. Yep. Yeah, but that's because they they were the indestructible family, so people <laughs> started to believe that these salves were actually right. magical potions. Because I mean, their dad was he was at death's door. Oh, he had like, no lips. He burned yeah. his lips and nose off. He, right? He had yeah. No lips. Yeah. How do you walk around with no lips? Exactly. <laughs> How did he survive that not know. being hospitalized? I don't know. Like the, the explanation fact that he didn't that actually just, get oh, an infection and die almost absolutely. immediately is insane. It living in squalor. Yeah. Essentially. It's yeah. not like that was a clean household, you yeah. know. The descriptions like, of that insane. are were so hard to read. It was disgusting. Yeah. But yeah, that it is a little bit of a miracle that man didn't die. Well, it's not a miracle. It's butterfly expression. <laughs> Duh. It's salve, salve, I, d- salve. I don't actually buy that. <laughs> <laughs> well, something had I'm to keep saying. the infection. So it's either God, right? Well, or some sort of salve some... like covered it. That's yes. Well, yeah, the salve was all, it. obviously it keeping the infection out, I guess. Or... out of it. It kept yes. the bacteria out of it. Yeah. It created a barrier. It did something, that's for sure. Yeah. Probably more than anything, though, it was just the one-on-one attention from his wife who just dotes on his every yeah. move. So maybe it's really super glue. She just super <laughs> glued his skin. <laughs> A 20-page oh list of wow. oils and what they cure? Yes. Dental abscesses, abundance, physical and sexual abuse, accidents, acne, addictions, adrenal glands, ADHD, aftershave, allergies, alignment, so they went through the alopecia, dictionary. Alzheimer's, we can solve this analgesic, this. anemia, this anorexia, anger, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, anti-spasmodic, <laughs> right. antiseptic, anxiety, aphrodisiac, 
arthritis, Asperger's syndrome, asthma, <laughs> athlete's foot, autism, <laughs> autoimmune disorders, and that's only a like it, it goes. It literally goes on for twenty. So it can, it can cure. Like, it can cure AIDS, autoimmune. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Wow, that is a miracle. Mm-hmm. That is a miracle. Just like a butterfly, that's a miracle. <laughs> Deliverance is that what it's called? Does it come with a banjo theme song when you open the box? <laughs> what the heck? That's crazy. Wow, crazy book. Okay, I wish she'd come talk to us. Well, good for her oh. for like putting it out there. Yeah. I want to read anything that she writes. I was thinking, I wonder if she's written anything else. Oh, I want her to write something else because I she... I mean, her entire academic career is based on writing. Yeah. But isn't so, it about history? It is. Is history, she a history yeah. major? Yeah. yeah. But she's brilliant. I mean, that's the thing is that if... I, I want everybody to know if this doesn't sound interesting for if you don't want to read about fundamentalist Mormons, if you don't want to read about <laughs> essential oils, whatever, like it's scrap just, ironing. It's all so well written. It was such an easy read, yeah. but beautifully written. Yeah, she just really is really, really talented. She is really talented. And honestly, the Mor- Mormons must be affronted by that this is the representation of them because <laughs> I've met so right. many nice, normal, <laughs> wonderful Mormon people um, who are not crazy like this well, it's absolutely. the fundamentalism that is the that crazy exists in every of most religion. religions right yeah. isn't that the issue like yes most religions are pretty normal yeah pretty normal it's, people and there's yeah. always a there's a, a there's a shithouse rat in every bunch yeah it's the bell curve right <laughs> it's the outliers yep there's- <laughs> some shithouse rat walking around just spewing bullshit and you're like okay that's that one's mormon <laughs> <coughs> this one over here is Southern Baptist. I mean, my grandmother just said, my, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> oh my goodness. I, I know we're, we're both dying <laughs> at the same time. <coughs> oh my goodness. It's the flu. It's the flu. Stay no, away. it's not the flu. <laughs> I mean, my grandmother, in my last conversation told me I'm uh, my husband being Catholic. Catholicism was not a religion; it was a cult. <laughs> She's pretty deep Southern Baptist. Wow! So, <coughs> yeah, she laughed at me and was like, "Catholics not a religion; that's a cult." Because <laughs> uh, he was accusing me of not living a Christian life, oh. and I was like, "Well, I married a Christian. Catholics not a Christian; that's a cult." And I was like, "Okay." As far wow. as I know, anybody that believes in Christ is a Christian. I think that is the that is the delineation yeah. of any Christian it's religion. Pretty low bar there, yeah, actually, Christ. right? You know, like it's not that hard. Yeah, right. So then, by your theory, Methodist also cult. I mean, what the fuck? Who even thinks that way? She does. Lots of people do. Wow. Yeah. Catholics a cult. <laughs> and I, I literally was like, oh, I may not be working with a fully rational human here <laughs> so maybe the mormons were really just a cult <laughs> that particular mormon that particular sect oh my goodness mm-hmm. um so i wanted to also do a follow-up on something we talked about before which was i mentioned the blinkist app that i was going to try yes so i took the opportunity my unpreparedness for this to to listen to educated on blinkist mm-hmm. i do not recommend that in for this book because it is so beautifully written you need to read the whole thing like right. it's just but for somebody like me who already read it and just needed a refresher it was awesome I listened to it that's on good. the way here from after dropping Vivian off at school and it reminded me oh yeah that's oh, right and it was oh. that quick it's 15 there, minutes it's 14 to 15 minutes oh, that's awesome yeah and I um I listened to a bunch of other ones and it is really helpful for those type of books that we've talked about like the self-help books that are like Okay, couldn't you put it in a pamphlet? I just want to hear all of the principles yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll, you know, extrapolate on my own. It's very helpful for those sort of things. But any book that is actually well written and getting like four or five stars, you should probably read the actual book. But yeah, um, but yeah Blinkist is it. It's cool. It's really cool. It's a good way to also figure out. Um, there were a couple of books that I had on my list that I was like, I don't know, the title and the back of the book sound interesting, but is this really going to be up my alley? It's kind of good to like listen to some of them. You know, f- 15 minutes is right. a small commitment and to go, okay, yeah, I would like to delve into this further, add it to my library list or some of them that I was like, okay, no. 
That's <laughs> not interesting. Interested. I have a whole library list and, and there I keep going through. I'm like, mm, I just don't know if I feel like reading that now. I wonder if I should just do that. Yeah. It's Link is, really, and find it's out really if it's really worth getting. It's only um, so it's, it's only for um, nonfiction. But um, oh, okay. yeah, but, that's but it. yeah, it's great for nonfiction. It's better for nonfiction. You don't get like sucked into. Right. Yeah. Statistics for 400 Well, pages. you know what I decided I'm going to listen to on Blinkist is um, Girl, Wash Your Face. Remember when oh, we did yeah. that and we all kind of trashed it? Yeah. But we were like, oh, this would be a good pamphlet. <laughs> yeah. I would like the pamphlet version. I didn't really like the stories about her life, um, but I, you know, it's kind of, it's always good to have a reminder about like, oh yeah, okay, that's a good principle. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still think that book's good for a 20-year-old yeah. young lady right. about to embark on her adult life. I think that was a good book for that time period. Um, I, uh, sent you, I think pictures of a couple books that I want to read. Um, I texted you a picture of one about raising boys. I oh, think you texted yes. both of us. Yes. Yeah. That was a while ago. Yes. Uh, and then that was when I was on the tour bus trying to get in my Kindle, <laughs> my fucking Kindle. Um, sure, but there right. was one that I bought because I don't have boys. I didn't buy that book, but I think I may want to read that book and discuss with people who have boys, mm -hmm. because even though it's not like the books we're reading about raging teenage girls, it is about raising teenage boys and about talking to them about sex, right. which I think is a great book. Um, and uh, there was one called The Kids Are in Bed that I, um, that I just read a review on. And it's about it's about taking your life back while your kids are still home, so to speak, mm -hmm. and making sure that you prioritize time for yourself. Mm. And Ooh, that sounds so kids good. are in bed um, when the kids are in bed is, I guess, when you can make some plans and do some things is the theory. But I haven't really read the book. I just read a really great review. So after our anxiety book, which I will that sounds finish, good to me. Um, I would like to read one or both of those. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't want to read the book about raising boys, I can have someone else read that. Has I think boys you should just because book. it'll be more useful. <laughs> well, I will say boys. that, you know, having one of each when I read the girl books. Yeah, it absolutely. There's so much that I take away from my son as well. I'm sure so I would imagine it's vice versa, too. I'm well, sure. the well, anxiety book distinct, that we're reading but... is specifically about teenage girls. And she says a lot of this will carry over. Yeah. But yeah, so whatever you guys want. We but can talk even about raising this. the teenage girls one. I was like, oh, OK, maybe my son's a girl. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe kidding. somewhat <laughs> so I got a recommendation of one that I think is something that we have talked about on the book club before um, it's called Essentialism the Disciplined Pursuit of Less um, and my friend Patty who is an uh -uh. author recommended this and he said this is one he said don't listen to this one on Blinkist because it's good and it's basically about paring down he talks about how priorities isn't a word because the whole idea is priority there. It's the most important thing. There's only one. So you can't ah. have priorities, plural. You should have and you need to hone in on your priority and go towards that full force. Interesting. And um, even just the description of that kind of gave me chills when he told me about it. I yeah. went, oh, I got to read that. OK, mm -hmm. I need to know that one, too. There's also a book that I want to read um, called... Killing the Flower Moon. Have you heard of this? Isn't it the moon flower? Mo Killing the moon, moon flower. Something mm. like that. Moon flower, flower moon. One yeah, of them. Killing like the. I... How do you know about this book? Because Tom was talking about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I want to read it. Killers of the Flower Moon. Killers of the Flower Moon. I want to read that book and discuss because I think that would make for a very good discussion. But down the line. We got self-help to deal with, apparently. <laughs> we got a lot of self-help. But the kids are in bed. I read a really great review of it, and I think that that's something we definitely could probably use the information for. It's so up our alley, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is up our alley. That's yeah. a self-help book. And I guess the anxiety book about kids could be viewed as self-help, but I feel like that's more psychology. Like understanding the psychology of what's going on in their kids in this point in their life and how to help them manage it. Which I guess is self-help, but it's more psychology no. to me than... It's still very similar. And the priority book, I like that a lot. We got a lot of reading to do. So, yeah, what's our order here? I don't know. Okay. Well, we got to do anxiety, anxiety book first. Anxiety. I right. now have the book. 
I finished the book and now I'm going to have to Blinkist it again. I'm so <laughs> sorry. It's, it's it, only 15 minutes. We can minutes. blame it's Amazon. Okay. I mean, seriously, I was so, fr- I was like, I can bang most of this. I'll be almost done. If I've been I, able I to read that hour and a half. I at the time. I'm, I'm so ready to talk about it. I liked it. It was great. Yeah. I've loved mm-hmm. it as far as I've been able to read it, but I've been so busy. So now, now I think I can start carving out, uh, you know, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there and get through the book. Um, Cause I'm really enjoying it. It's not that I'm not enjoying it. It's just that I haven't had the time to sit down. And read, and I try not to read stuff I need to remember before bed mm-hmm. because I'll have to reread it. So I need to read it like when I'm sitting at pickup and, you right. know, when I'm in the daytime. I've been falling asleep a lot when I get still. I think, I think, I think November, December, January really did a number on me. So as soon as I sit down, I fall asleep. I fell asleep in the car at pickup yesterday and didn't even realize I'd fallen asleep. And Isla came in and started knocking on the door and it scared me so badly because I didn't realize I'd fallen asleep. I was reading a magazine and just laid my head back. I was completely out. My mouth was probably open, you know, <laughs> the driver's seat at pick up. I was so tired. I guess. Rest assured, you were probably not the first, nor will you be the last. No, I'm correct. sure there are a lot of people falling asleep at pick up. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. I'm sure. <laughs> well, I personally, and I think you guys also highly recommend this book. 100%. Educated. Yes. Yeah. There will be a link on my website. So you can just click the link. It'll take you straight to Amazon to purchase the book or the audio book or whatever you want. It's available at the local library. Although Kirsten said there was like 300 people ahead of her. It's so funny because I for just book. got it. Like zero weight. Well, it must have just happened to have been in and they probably shelved it instead of pulling it for somebody. Or did you put it on hold? I put it on hold. What library are you going to? Oh, maybe. It doesn't matter. It's the LA system. So it's all. Then maybe it was that I was 287 in the audio book and that it was going to take too long to get to me and to read in time for this. Oh, oh, got it. um, But yeah, it's still, it's really popular, but it's also in paperback now. So. Oh, that's good. It's very available. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Definitely give it a read if you're interested. We still have to get Miss Pat. I'm still trying to get Miss Pat to come. And I had a big discussion about her book yesterday, again, with somebody. I still feel like every human being, every American should read her book. So good. It's called Rabbit, the Autobiography of Miss Pat. I learned, I learned the depth of my ignorance by reading that book. I did not think I was an ignorant person. And I read that book and learned that I am a very ignorant person in the way uh, the African community uh, survives in this country in some places, not every African American community, but her community. I really was ignorant, and I cannot, I cannot speak highly enough about her book. And I promise we will get her on here at some point. She keeps coming into town and asking me, and it's something. It's a date that I can't do. I we just can't get our schedules to line up. So they will at some point, and I'll have to reread her book again by the time we get her on here because I'll forget half of it. But yeah, but it's worth it, and it's an easy yeah. read and a great read. Too. It is it's worth quick. it. Yeah, it's quick, and she reads it in audiobook. She reads the book, which I Does think. She? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think the next time I quote read it I'm, I'm gonna listen to it mm-hmm. and listen to her read the book it's just yeah, such a too. great book i love that book i wish they'd make that so into a good. movie oh great movie. they might it would be a great movie yeah. anyway thanks ladies thanks for always Thank reading you. with me and being patient with me i'm the worst reader in the book i'm the slowest reader <laughs> in the book club that's not true just it right is now. true i'm no. always last i'm always the last one to finish so You're thank the busiest, you for being maybe. Patient. i i don't know if i'm the busiest but i am pretty busy I guess I am pretty busy. But anyway, thank you, ladies. I appreciate it.